Hey everybody, my name is Rob Woodbridge from Untether.tv. What you're about to see here is a clip, a short clip of a much longer episode. It can be found on Untether.tv. So if you really are interested in this, go to Untether.tv, do a search for this title, and you'll find it there. But enjoy this short clip. The coolest thing, one of the coolest things about Romo is that because he's using a smartphone, we actually have access to the App Store. And what that means is that you can constantly download new behaviors for your robot over time, and the robots are also all Wi-Fi connected, so that they learn from each other. Okay. So if one person creates a behavior for one robot, robot, all the other robots can leverage that behavior and learn it. Um, and so our time is limited, but you know we have an SDK so that anybody out there who I mean we actually have lots of different ways of programming the robot. We have uh, the simplest possible way, which is, uh, you know, an eight-year-old can instantly and intuitively create a behavior or personality for the robot just using this visual programming language on the device itself. And then all the way on the other th end of things, we have an SDK so that any experienced uh, engineer can actually build their own apps for Romo and share that with everybody else who owns robots in the wild. And so the whole goal of that is, like, we don't have enough time to build all of these cool functionalities that we think are possible. So we want to put that power into other people's hands um, let them build software for Romo as well and, and let the, the apps that are most popular um, kind of surface and, and, and all the robots can leverage those apps. How, how do you decide what, what features or, or what Romo will do? Like, uh, I mean, is it just, it's got to start at some point with you guys saying, wouldn't it be cool if, as you did, right? Wouldn't it be cool if, wouldn't it be yeah. cool if, but now, so how many are in production? You've got 5,000 that have been, that have been are in, you've got 5,000 robots roaming the land right now? Um, in the wild yeah. right now, of, of this version, of the latest yeah. version of Romo, we currently have, uh, I think we, we uh, as of this week, we'll have like 2,200 robots. Okay. Um, and then we'll, we're shipping another 2,800 robots in the next month. Um, and then we'll be shipping another 10,000 robots uh, later this summer. So it's, it's scaling rapidly. That's pretty quick. Uh, so, yeah, but, uh, like obviously people uh, people are, are telling you what they'd like. So how do you, you've got the SDK and you've got, you know, let developers do their own thing, but how do you guys decide what goes in and what doesn't go into Romo? It's really hard. That's one of the, <laughs> hardest, that's one of the hardest things that we do. Um, do you fight about it? Do you, do you guys, do, you, do oh, the three, three of you definitely. guys sit down and, and duke it out or do you bring investors in? 20 of us. 20 of us. 20. Everybody who we've hired at Remoto has an opinion. Um, as an opinion and a good one, uh, because we all care about it a lot. If we didn't care about <laughs> robots, there's no way we would put in the hours or, or deal with the hassle. Yeah. But um, so we all do. We all talk about it a lot, trying to figure out what what do we think, and you know, what do we think is the long term, uh, uh, you know, the most viable use cases, and also the use cases that are going to be easiest to hit right now, as opposed to in a year from now. Um, it depends. I think right now it's it's a question of like, what do we think are the use cases that are simplest? Actually, that's a big one for us because you mentioned Romo is a really complicated device. And it's true he's really complicated to build, uh, but at the same time, we wanted to build something that was insanely simple to yeah. use, like insanely yeah. simple. So literally, when you get Romo, you just uh, here, I'll I'll pull the box off. So you just literally you know here's the robot sitting inside. So I literally just take the robot out of the box and then pull my phone out of my pocket and plug my phone into Romo. Uh, and it automatically downloads the software you need. He instantly wakes up. He's an intelligent creature, like following your face and, uh, and doing things like that. So anyway, uh, we, we basically are uh, really focused on the use cases that we think are super simple. Like what, what's something that people can instantly understand? Um, and, uh, and then also just what are things that are, that are easy enough to use that we think that actually like 100% of our user base is actually going to benefit from them. So have you had, uh, I mean, are there features that, that you thought, listen, these are, these are definitely going to fit in that you've had to pull or that, that, uh, that, you know, kind of however you do it democratically or otherwise that you just say, no, you know, we, we can't afford to build this in it, but we, you know, that have made it into the second version? Um. You know, one example of something that we thought we were going to do early on that we decided not to do was augmented reality. Hmm. Um, we, we were, when we were initially thinking, we were like, oh, it'd be an awesome gaming platform for augmented reality, and, and we should build that. Um, 
at the same time, you know, there are these, the, 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 these other things we want to do. Like we're like, Romo would be an amazing pet slash friend. He, um, he's intelligent. He can exhibit these cool autonomous behaviors. He uses computer vision using the video camera on the phone to kind of analyze the world around him um, and react accordingly. Uh, and then we were also obviously thinking, you know, this also needs to be a robot that anybody can program and it'd be an awesome way of getting kids excited about computer science. Um, of those three, we've actually focused on the last two, the augmented reality uh, and gaming. We actually decided that that's not what Romo is going to be good at. Um, and also that that's not, there's not like a true need for that. We think that, uh, apps, you know, for 99 cents, it's really easy to download an, an, an app that is like an insanely entertaining. We're not so much interested in building robots that will just entertain. We'd rather build robots that, um, that are a manifestation of people's imaginations. And that was the reason that we ended up focusing much more on this idea of, you know, Romo's a, a personality and a creature that you can train over time. And basically in training him, uh, you know, depending on the level of training that you want to do, you, you're going to learn computer science as you go. Because you start learning about if, you know, if clauses and, um, and for loops and, uh, and just slowly figuring out how to build these simple programs for Romo where it's totally motivated, you know, because you're like, okay, I just want to figure out how to get the robot to go from my kitchen to the living room, uh, you know, to, to alert me that dinner's ready or whatever it is. But I, but the whole, that, that's what we were mainly focused on. It was, it was trying to figure out a way of, um, of turning him into an intelligent creature and uh, allowing anybody to program him. So those are the two things that we're currently focused on for Romo. And, uh, it's hard because there are like a hundred other things that we could do as well. Romo also does telepresence, but we don't actually talk about it that much because it's hard for people to understand, which is crazy. But with robots in general, it sucks because there's no one we can copy. <laughs> uh, there's no like marketing campaign for robots. We're like, oh, that was a great marketing campaign for a robot. Let's do that, you know? Um, so it's really more like we're, we're learning stuff from scratch. And, and telepresence is an especially hard one because it's actually one of the coolest things that Romo does, which he streams two-way audio and video between any, from, from you know, the device on the robot to any iPad, iPhone, uh, com uh, computer running Chrome. Uh, so he, he streams two-way audio and video, but uh, it's just hard to, and, and what that means is he's basically Skype on wheels. Right. So you can use Romo <laughs> to like log in, babysit kids. You can invite grandma to hang out for Thanksgiving dinner if she can't make it and she lives on the other side of the country. Or you know, grandma can log in and play hide and go seek with her granddaughter for 15 minutes every single night. There are a lot of really cool use cases there. Um, but it's just weird enough that it's kind of hard to describe. So that's actually a, a feature that we provide to all of our users, but we don't really talk about it that much because... There are simpler things that we can describe that, that are just as compelling. Mm -hmm.